Let's try this again. All right, so we're talking Half-Life. Half-Life might be something that you're familiar with. You probably did something about it in our science. I think it's important. Okay, we usually do two labs with this unit. Um, we do one with M&Ms that you may have done in Algebra 2, and we do one with licorice, okay? So half-life is the amount of time for something to, for half of something to decay. And what do I mean by that? When we talked about, um, in our last video, we talked about carbon-14. My daughter is still awake upstairs, so this could be interesting, guys. And carbon-14 emits a beta particle and turns into nitrogen. So let's say I had 100 of these carbons. Obviously, I'd have way more, but it's fine. If I had 100 of them, the half-life is the amount of time it would take for that to drop to 50. Um, that's purely st statistical, um, but it is not affected by the amount that you have left. It's not affected by te temperature, by pressure. Um, it is just affected, it is something that is characteristic and tabulated for the specific nucleotide. So some of them have half-lives in the milliseconds and some of them have half-lives in the billions of years, okay? So um, like iodine-131 has a half-life of like eight days, whereas uranium-238, I think, has a half-life of like four billion years. So um, the half-lives can change significantly depending on what substance it is, and it has to do with stability and kind of randomness, quite frankly. So um, that's what the half-life is. So we're going to talk about how to calculate those. The last time I got to this point, this thing quit on me, so we're going to see how that goes. But um, we're going to do some calculations, and I know you're like, Mrs. Bell, this is like the second to last week of school. Do I really need to do calculations? Yes, you do. But um, we'll do some easy ones. So here's kind of like the gist of it, right? So you start with a hole, one, okay? And then after one half-life, what's left is, is a half, okay? So this would be one half-life, that arrow. After another half-life, one-fourth. After another half-life, you guessed it, one eighth. What am I doing? I'm just multiplying that bottom number by two, or I'm dividing it by two, right? I'm doing one divided by two equals 0.5, divided by two equals 0.25. That's the idea, okay? Another half-life is 1 16th, and another half-life would be 1 32nd, et cetera, okay? Each arrow represents a half-life, so if I wanted to know how many half-lives it would take for something to become 1 32nd of what it originally was, I would just count the arrows, one, two, Three, four, five. So five half-lives is how long it would take for that substance to become 130. I would only have 132nd of that substance left. When I say that substance, I mean this stuff, not the products, like the reactants that hasn't decayed yet. Okay, so see, there's, these are some types of questions that you could be asked, and I'm going to need you to listen because I am not going to write this all out, and I know there's my hand in the video, whatever, come on. So you might say, okay, I have an initial sample of um, 60 grams of a radioisotope. Its half-life is um, 10 days. How much is left after 40 days? Hopefully, that doesn't seem too intimidating because it shouldn't be. It should be pretty simple, okay? See these little arrows I did up here? I really like those, and I'm going to stick with them, okay? Move that up there. All right. So I'm going to start with my emissional amount. Now, since I didn't ask for a fraction, I'm not going to do the one, one-half, one-fourth. I'm going to start with 60 because I started with 60 grams, and then I'm just going to decay it. After one half-life, how much is left? Oh, I'm going to get numbers I don't really want, but that's fine. Um, after one half-life, I have 30 grams left, right? Okay, there we go. 30. Great. That's one half-life, and that would be 10 days. Well, I'm looking for 40 days, so I'm going to go again. Take that 30. Divided by 2, and I get 15 grams. Well, another half-life has gone by, and half-lives don't double like, um, like 
the amounts kind of do. So I'm going to say this was another 10 days, so it's 20 days total. All right. Okay, so I'm at 15, I'm at 20. I'm looking for 40, so I got to keep going. Another 10 days is going to pass, and I'm at 30 total. 15, I'm going to divide it in half, and I'm going to get 7.5. I have 7.5 grams left. After 30 days, well, I'm looking for 40, so I'm going to have to do it one more time, which is 40 days. And 7.5 and divided by 2 is going to be... I'm now just looking at myself instead of doing mental math. Um, 3.75. Yeah, I think so. 3.5, 3.5 is 7. Yeah, okay, sorry. Pleasant. Um, that's my hand doing that. Okay, so here's the answer. Mrs. Bell, you're confusing me, I know. This is 3.75 grams is left after 40 days, okay? Um, that's basically how you do a half-life calculation. How many half-lives did it go through? One, two, three, four. Four half-lives, okay? So what you essentially could have done is said, oh, four half-lives is 1 16th. Multiply 1 16th by 60, and you would have gotten the same answer. Um, another trickier type of question they could ask you is, okay, after... Five half lives. One gram is left. How much did we start with? Well, that's kind of important, okay, because sometimes some of these things have medical uses, okay, and if they have a shorter half life and you order it, Okay, let's say you Amazon Prime yourself some iodine-131 and you need 100 grams of it. Well, that stuff's going to start decaying as soon as they package it and send it to you, right? It's going to start decaying. once it's As soon as it's made, it's going to start decaying. So if you need 100 grams of it, you're going to have to order more than 100 grams because it's going to start decaying into other stuff. Um, so you've got to keep that in mind. So let's say, okay, I if I need... Um, one gram after five half-lives, come on, okay, what did I start with, okay, or what, how much should I order, essentially, so in this case, you're going to start on the other side, I'm going to start over here, I've got one gram, okay, one half-life happened, okay, and what decayed to give me one gram, well, two grams, right, two decayed into one, all right, let's do it again. There's another half-life. That would be four. See how I'm doubling it instead of multi dividing it by two? All right. I want five half-lives, so this is three. It's going to give me eight. This is four. It's going to give me 16. 32. It's going to give me five. So after five half-lives, I have one amount, one gram left. If I started with 32 grams, that's crazy, right? Let's say that your um, stuff decay has a half life of eight days, and um, you need it's going to take five half lives before you use it. Well, you need to order 32 times as much of it because it's going to decay that many times. That's amazing. Okay, those are some basic half life calculations. Um, I'll give you a little bit of practice. We're going to do a few simulations this week. You're going to watch these two videos, and then I'll give you one or two Castle Learnings next week, and then we'll be done with chemistry for the year. And I'm so sad that you're not in my classroom so that we can celebrate the right way, but um, I hope it wasn't, I hope it was a good year, and I miss you guys something fierce, and I hope to see you all next year. Bye, guys.